guys. Welcome to the Children's Zoo. My name's Russell. I'm one of the keepers working with our ambassador animals. And today I have one of our all-stars. Uh, this is Ernie. He is our North American porcupine. Uh, he's munching on his one of his treats at the moment. So Ernie, like I said, is a North American porcupine. He was actually born here at the Houston Zoo. His dad is still here living in our forest area in the children's zoo. Ernie, do you like to wave? Can you wave? Good boy, he's very happy to see you all. Like I said, he's one of our all-stars. He does enjoy coming out. So he has missed it since you guys have not been around and he hasn't been out to see people. Um, he is a, a porcupine, so he does have quills. You probably see all these soft um, hairs up top. Those are his guard hairs. Um, they're, they kind of give him a sense of if something gets near him and they keep him warm in the colder climates because he can live all the way up into Canada. Um, so they do live in a cold, cold environment. But if you look right back over here, you can see his quills there. These are the actual quills, the ones with the black tip. Um, they are loose on his body, so if something touches it and they have a little barb on the end, they're gonna go in and it's gonna come out in whatever touched them accidentally. Um, they are not terribly fast, so that is their primary defense. They uh, can climb trees and they will. Um, but they're not going to run away from things. So if they get cornered by a predator, they're going to um, they're going to turn around just like that. They're going to puff up and open those quills and expose those quills. They have about 30,000 quills over their entire body, focused primarily on their lower back and tail. Um, he does not have any quills on his face, on his underbelly, or his feet. Um, Ernie weighs about 20 pounds. That's about pretty average for a North American porcupine. Um, he is one of our, he is trained. He's been trained from a very young age. Uh, he does enjoy working and training. So he knows quite a few behaviors. Um, uh, so we got a question from Sydney. She asked, are they endangered? And they are actually least concerned at the moment. Their biggest uh, kind of threat would be, you know, tearing down forests and things like that. They do need trees and forested type environments to um, live. That's where they climb. That's where they they make their dens when they're raising offspring. They are very good climbers as well. They he is an herbivore, so currently he's uh, munching on some zucchini. He's got. Today we've got sweet potato, carrots, banana, which is one of his favorites, um, and then various greens. Uh, he is strictly an herbivore. He is a rodent. Um, so he is a rodent. He's the second largest rodent in North America, only to the beaver. So we got a question about what their quills are made out of. Uh, their quills are actually just modified hair. That's all it is. So if he's got these soft hairs up here, then the quills themselves are hollow and they're just um, sturdy hairs, basically, with a little barb on the end, a little hook on the end. Uh, so Emery asked if porcupines can be pets, and I would highly not recommend that. Um, they do have lots of quills. Uh, they're, so you're not going to be able to pet them. They're hard to take care of. They have a very strong odor, especially around breeding season, um, which is in the fall into winter. Uh, so they are rodents, and so they, their teeth do continue to grow their entire life. Uh, they, I don't know if you guys can see down there, he does kind of have orange teeth, and that's because they continue to grow, their composition of their teeth is a little bit different got a little more high, a little higher iron content um, and whatnot. Uh, Casey's asking, what are their predators? So their predators are anything that is significantly bigger than them and can flip them over for the most part. So you're looking at lynx, bobcat, maybe some coyotes, wolves, mountain lions, things like that. There are quills all over their back side. So 
it's going to be the, the underbelly is where they need to get. So something that can lift them over and then get to their soft exposed area. Um, what are we going to do? Okay. He's got long quills, or long nails right there. So that he, he's a very good climber. Okay, Drew asks, what animals are they related to? So these guys are in the rodent family. So um, you can think of rats and things that are in the same rodent family, but beavers um, as well as kind of one of their close relatives up here in, in North America. So. Uh, so we've got a question, what is, where do they live in the wild? These guys are native um, to North America all over. So you can find them down in into Texas, usually more west Texas, but then all the way up through North America and into Canada especially. They're, they're kind of all over the place. So Ernie was born here, like I said, and we do uh, a lot of training. So he's, he's been going through our training program since birth, pretty much. Um, so we do our training so that we can take better care of him and then show some of his natural behavior. So um, the stand up that you saw earlier, that's really lets us get a good look at his belly, see if we can see anything. Um, we can look at his nails but while he, he's shaking with us. Uh, he lets us touch the back of his body so we can check his quills, check anything like that. Um, he's trained to go in his kennel so that he goes back and forth very easily. We can use that to get on a scale. Um, he, he does get on a scale sometimes on his own as well. Um, so you, you're getting a nice shot there of his nose. Uh, their nose is the, one of their best features. They have a very good sense of smell. Um, their eyesight is not very good. So they rely on that nose for uh, to find pretty much anything and everything. So from Bree, we got a question about how long do they live? So Ernie here is actually 12 years old. He'll be 13 this year. He is, um, that's a, an average lifespan is probably about 10 to 15 in the wild. In a zoo setting, we can, they can get up to, you know, in their mid to upper 20s. His dad is still with us. Uh, and his dad is somewhere probably about the 23 year old range. So still doing well. Um, they do, they can live quite a while once they get to that adult size. Uh, so this is, uh, for those of you joining, this is Ernie. He is our North American porcupine. He's one of our uh, all-star ambassador animals. Oh, wait. oh boy, there you go. So he loves coming out and meeting people, so he is really missing all of you guys. He's also one of our more popular ambassador animals. So Angela asked a very good question. The question was, can they shoot their quill? And the answer is no. So that is a myth. These guys, their quills are loosely attached to their body, but you do need to come in contact with them to, for those quills to come out. Uh, they do shed their quills, just like dogs shed their hair. Um, so he's actually doing that right now as it's warming up. He's shedding a lot of his fur, so his extra fur, his guard hairs and his quills, um, he is shedding them quite a bit. And so sometimes he'll stand up and he'll kind of just do a shake like you would see, um, you know, any animal do. And sometimes quills will fall out. So it looks, it can look like they're shooting, but they're not actually shooting them. Uh, Karen asked, what is his favorite food? Um, so he has a lot of favorite food. He likes food in general. Um, some of his favorites are sweet potatoes, bananas, um, and carrots mostly. But he, he'll eat pretty much anything if given, if we just leave it for him. AJ asks, is he spiky? Yes, he's very, very spiky. Um, he has about, I don't know if I've said this already, he has about 30,000 quills over his entire body. So they run from basically the top of his head all the way down his tail, down his sides. Um, the only place that does not have quills is going to be his feet, his belly, and his face. That's it. Everything else is quills. So if 
he had a, a predator came up, what he's going to do is basically tuck down kind of like he's doing, but he's going to cause all these quills to stand up. So he actually can control his quill and allow and make them stand up on end so they reach um, their, their peak point. Oh boy. And then if a predator comes up and comes towards them, they're going to um, get nothing but quills. He can use his tail and actually whip it into predators if they do come up behind him. So Maria asks, are they dangerous? Um, no, they're not dangerous. They're herbivores. They eat, you know, fruits and veggies and plants um, and bark and things like that. However, uh, they do have all their quills. So they um, could be dangerous in that aspect. If your dog was to go up and smell them, they're probably going to get uh, quills in the face, and that's not good. So Karen asks if they live in Texas. Yes, they do live in Texas. Um, so you can find them down here more into kind of the West Texas region. They like, they live in all different habitats, but they do like a forested environment. Uh, they're not very fast moving, so they can use the brush and the, the plants and other things like that to, to hide in as they kind of get going around. Uh, so Renee asks, how tall is he? That's a good question. He's probably about about three feet if he stands all the way up. Um, his tail is probably about eight or ten inches long, give or take. Can I see this one? Good boy. So he smells everything. So whenever we put our hands up, um, we do training, we put a target stick, we do anything near him, he's going to smell it first. That's his number one goal. Another question we've gotten is do they live in groups in the wild? Most of the time, no. Um, males will kind of have a territory that they will um, surveil and kind of travel around. Um, and males don't really crisscross paths very much. Um, you can find them in pairs every now and again, but that's primarily during breeding season. For the most part, they like to be by themselves. So Jackie asks, how can you help save them in the wild? That's a great question. So that is one thing we try and do a lot here. So these guys need plants. They need forests, they need brush, they need bushes. So one thing you can do is reduce your amount of uh, paper products you use, recycle what you don't use, and then look for um, products that have been repurposed from recycled wood or reclaimed wood and things like that because Ernie here needs lots and lots of trees to climb in, to eat the bark, to um, hide from predators, everything. Adam asks, are they related to hedgehogs? That's a good question, but no, they actually are not. They are um, in the rodent family. This is about as fast as Ernie moves. Good boy. So he's been trained for a variety of behaviors. He has um, a couple of turns, he stands up, he targets, so we can get him around places. He does his shapes. Um, he knows that once he does a behavior, he hears the word good, and uh, then he's gonna get his whatever favorite food item he wants. Bri asks, how long are his quills? They're not very long. They're probably four inches, give or take, for the most part. Good boy. Oop, hello. All right, so Maria asks, where can you see Ernie at the zoo? So Ernie is one of our ambassador animals, so he is not on exhibit. Um, he comes out for events like this, um, for special events, for keeper chats, to talk about him. However, his dad does live on exhibit, so you can see a North American porcupine um, anytime you come into the children's zoo. And he's a very slow eater. He enjoys his food, he savors it. Evelyn asks, why doesn't he jump off the table? Well, first off, porcupines don't jump. 
Um, second of all, Ernie has been trained to be on this table since uh, day one, and so he knows that this is where food is, this is where good things happen, so I'm just gonna hang out. There's really no reason for me to go anywhere. Jody asked, do they live in trees? Yes, they do. They, they spend the majority of their time on the ground, but they, they are very good climbers. They have been known to build nests and things in the trees for their offspring. Um, but they, they will also build in roots and other bushes and things. So they're, they're kind of all over the place. They, they do a little bit of everything. So, that was a, a little piece of banana. That's one of his favorites. So we cut his pieces into strips. Um, that really just helps us get it to him quicker um, and more accurately. He does have quills kind of around his face. Um, so we've got to be careful anytime we're working with him or around him. And we've got to make sure we don't accidentally startle him. Because if he was to get spooked, he's going to tense up, raise his quills up, and then we've we uh, are at greater risk of getting a quill if we accidentally were to touch him, which is why we do not touch him. Paige asked, does he make any noises? Yes, he does. Um, he makes kind of a kind of low whimper, especially during breeding season when he's, um, you know, when he might be looking for other things or when he's really looking for food or he sees us sometimes and he says, I'm really hungry, so I'll, he'll, he'll make his little um, kind of kind of low-pitched whimper, for lack of a better word. As you can see, he's starting to eat even slower, which means he's starting to get a little bit full. Nolan asks if he's full-grown. Yes, he is. He is 12 years old, which is kind of middle-aged to upper middle age for a porcupine. He weighs about 20 pounds. So he is a big boy, that's for sure. Uh, so if you've seen when he reaches out for food, he tends to hold it with his um, feet. He's got very long nails, they're good for climbing. He's very strong. And this is also kind of a protective posture, so if anything was to sneak up on him while he's eating, he's, he's ready in, in defense mode in case he needs to be. So like I said, this is Ernie. He's our North American porcupine. He is 12 years old. He was actually born right here at the Houston Zoo. His dad still lives with us. He is on exhibit in the forest section in the children's zoo. So he, you can see him anytime during the day. Um, Ernie has a very special job. He's an ambassador animal. So he comes out to meet people, educate people about his species, uh, about conservation, and what they can do to help. So he has a very important, very unique role. Karen asked, do, they, do we trim his nails? Yes, we do. Um, he does wear them down a little bit on his own. Uh, he, in his enclosure, he has lots of perching. He can climb and run around, and uh, so he does wear them down, but we do have to trim them from time to time. So we're, we're always working on training that behavior so that he will allow us to clip them. Usually it's uh, through the fence, and he'll, he'll put his claws through. We'll give him some banana, and then we can clip his nails, and he's fine with that. Emma asked, does he like to play? Uh, the answer to that is somewhat. So this is balled up paper that has some of his food in it. We'll see if he wants to get into it. He's he's not the, uh... yeah, you want that? Okay, there you go. Cool, there we go. So he is not a playful as, as you would think of like, like a dog or um, one of your house pets, but he does enjoy enrichment. Usually food enrichment is his favorite. So we will, hide things in puzzle feeders and things like that to give him the opportunity to forage for it. And, um, are you done? Yeah, okay. Or, or we just give up on things. All right. Yeah, we're done with that? Okay. All right, 
right, well, thank you for joining us today and meeting Ernie. Um, as you can see, we are still here taking care of everything, uh, even though guests are not here. And unfortunately, that means uh, some of our, our revenue stream is not here. So if you can and want to uh, help us out, you can go to the website and check out the Emergency Zoo Fund. That would be great. Um, and then join us at 11 a.m. tomorrow to see what the next animal is going to be. Bye.